I love the My Summer Car Rally. I think it's just a great concept for a game. Having to build your own car completely from scratch in order to win the rally, all while staving off starvation, paying your bills, and avoiding the police. I wanted to extend this feeling as much as I could into real life, so I decided to do a little engineering challenge. Can I win the rally while building all of my sim racing components in real life? So the conditions of the challenge are like this. You have to build all of your own input devices. You have to DIY as much as you can of those devices. And you've got to win gold. In this video, I will go over the design process for the pedals, then I will get into detail about how the electrics work, and finally, I will talk about the code and how it sends a signal from the potentiometer via an Arduino Micro to the PC. First, let's check on our Finnish friend there, he took a bit of a tail whip. Yeah, that's one happy rally fan right there. Here's a little disclaimer before we get into it. To begin this project, I decided to start somewhere familiar. I had been using these Logitech pedals for a few years now, and I really did like them, and I thought it'd be a simple place to begin any design work, so I'm going to start from here. Here we have the pedal outside of the housing. As you can see, it's a pretty simple design. There's a spring in that red cylinder, and then inside, there's a potentiometer attached to a couple gears. Ignore the hair. Like I said, it's been used for a few years. These are the springs used inside the Logitech pedals. As you can see, each of them is a little bit different. Next up, I wanted to use this concept in the design. I 3D printed a linear bearing, and I just love this thing. It's a lot smoother than you'd expect, and I thought it would be great if I could incorporate this into the final design. It does require a bit of sanding, though. To start the design, let's, uh, let's make a triangle with three rotating joints, and we'll have one variable side of that triangle. So the springs that we're going to use compress around 30 millimeters, so we'll list that there, and that'll produce a change in about 30 degrees, hopefully. Uh, and the other dimension we are working with is we want about a 130 millimeter base. I will just go through a quick slideshow to show how the design progressed. I started with a separated base, but switched over to a singular base. This uh, design was originally intended to mate to an 80-20 aluminum frame, but I ended up mounting it to wood because it was a lot cheaper. And this is what I ended up settling on for V1. I went ahead and printed this version of the pedal to try it out and see how it feels, and this is the result. I was pretty happy with how this first version turned out. There are definitely some problems with it, some of which we'll get into later, but I think for a start, this was a really great try. I wasn't sure what to expect with 3D printed parts, but I was very happy with how smooth the pedal felt. This is when I realized that this design actually can work. Okay, so I skipped a couple steps, which I will go over later, but I have connected the pedal to my PC, and I am currently running Aceto Corza. So let's try it out. And it works! That's great. I'm very happy to see this up and running, especially after all that hard work. But if we look a little closer, we can see the first of many issues with this design. That's unacceptable. We can do better. The high fluctuation in signal was due to a few reasons, the main one being that the gear ratio was too small. We can use a couple simple equations to make a better choice of gear sizes. The first of which is gear module equals the diameter divided by the number of teeth. 
The second is the change in angle of your potentiometer is equal to the change in angle of your pedal times the big to little gear ratio. This could be teeth or diameter. So let's list out a few of the parameters we were using in the V1 design. We were using a big gear diameter of 120 millimeters and a little gear of 20 millimeters. The change in angle of our pedal was 22.5 degrees, and that's due to the limitations on the design. What we want to calculate is the change in angle of the potentiometer or the little gear. So doing some calculations here, we can see that we use 135 degrees of the potentiometer gear, or in other words, 50% of our available 270 degree range. We can improve a lot on the amount of the potentiometer range we use, so in order to help us with that, I wrote a little Python script to assist in selecting the best gear sizes given our design constraints. I started with some notable information, such as lists of what gear diameters and modules we might be interested in, and then I added a couple of stats such as the degrees of movement of our pedal, as well as the smallest module in teeth that we can use due to printing resolution constraints. Then I made an equation to calculate the amount of teeth in each gear. From there, I cycle through every value provided in the initial lists and look for any viable gear pairings. And for any viable gears that are found, I print out the amount of potentiometer movement that would be generated by that pair. Here are the results from running that script. I got four valid options. The bottom one looks to be the best because it has 193 degrees of movement, but unfortunately it has 72 millimeter separation between the two gears, and that's just not going to work for us. It's too, it's too large given our design. So next up, uh, we have 189 degrees of movement uh, and only 70.5 millimeter separation, which does work for us, so we're going to select this option. To sum up, by making this change, we use about 20% more of the resolution of the potentiometer. The next problem was the spring house was a little crooked. Those circular cutouts in the side needed to be there to clear the bearings in the base. Uh, even so, it was still pretty smooth. To fix this, I pushed the top bearing further into the pedal itself to give us more room to work with while retaining the same spring characteristics. The next problem was the gear did not sit nicely inside the pedal. I actually had to super glue it in there to keep it steady. To fix this, I just added a second hole to the V2 Designs gear. Another problem I wanted to solve was the V1 design presented a bit of a pinch hazard, and figuring that I'd rather not get my toes munched, I added a shield to protect from pinching. The final problem I wanted to solve was the wiring was just loose. There was no routing for it, so for V2, I just added a simple channel in the support struts. Now that we've fixed all of our main issues, we're ready to assemble V2. I've laid out all of the necessary pieces here. I'm just going to speed through the assembly here, otherwise we'd be sitting here forever. One important thing you have to do when assembling these is you have to sand the spring container assembly. I initially used 120 grit, and then 400 grit, and finally 600 grit to really make it smooth. It is a little tricky to install some of the hardware, especially the pedal head bolts, but once you get the hang of it, it's all pretty straightforward. And here we have a completed V2. Already I can tell that this version is a lot smoother and a lot stronger than the previous version. Here's a closer look at the completed design. 
I'm really, really happy with this one. I went ahead and printed three of these. Next, let's take a look at the electrical side of this project. So the basics of how it works is I just have a simple electrical circuit here with a five volt source going to ground. And in between, I have a 10K resistor and a 10K potentiometer. And I measure the voltage halfway in between. From this voltage reading, we can infer on what the position of the potentiometer is, and this is how we calculate the position of the pedal. Here's a diagram expanding on that simple concept. This uses three potentiometers as well as an Arduino to provide and measure voltage, and there are three LEDs that dim or brighten based on the position of the potentiometers. Another component of this design that I added was some clever cabling to easily repair and replace pedals, as well as to keep the Arduino on the desk and not by your feet. Again, I'm going to skip through the soldering, but it's all pretty basic stuff, and I bet anybody could do it with minimal preparation. Okay, so here we have the wiring done. I didn't include the big long cable that goes to the desk, but that's a mess, so we don't need to take a look at that. So to show how this project works from the PC side of things, I've gone ahead and opened up a window in the Arduino IDE, and I've written some simple code here. Uh, if you'd like to reference it, everything is available in the description. The first thing we do is we measure the voltage on the circuit that was specified earlier in this video. And then we're just going to print out whatever value the Arduino is reading. As you can see, when the pedal is not depressed, we see a value of 467. And when it is, we see around 67, 68. So we're going to record these two values. Then we can do a simple calculation to rescale whatever values we're seeing from the pedal to be between 0 and 255 which is a lot more PC interpretable, and that's what we're going for. Those numbers in the bottom left look pretty smooth, so I was pretty happy with this, and I'm sure you could do a little better with the code, but this was sufficient for me. Okay, so I've just repeated the same code three times for each three pedals, and they all look good to me, so let's go try it out. To try this out, I'm going to start with my favorite racing game of all time, Dirt Rally 2.0. I just feel so at home in this game, I can't imagine trying these out for the first time anywhere else. Now you'll have to forgive me, my wheel is broken at the moment. I was using my brother's wheel, and it wasn't calibrated correctly, so my steering is a bit off in this video, but you can really see the accelerator and brake are working well. This was a really, really fun experience. I didn't know I had it in me to go and make something like this and then make a video on it. It was a ton of work and a ton of learning, but I'm really happy I saw this through. It was definitely a growing experience for sure. I have linked all of the STL files for the pedals, all code I used in this video, as well as my Thingiverse page, Instagram, and Twitter in the description below. So, if you want to keep up with what I'm working on, those are the best places to follow me. I just want to thank everyone who watched this video. I really hope you were able to learn something, or were inspired to do a project of your own. Or at least, hopefully, this was entertaining. Please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching.